Okay, finishing up for assignment six. Quick reminder, we were designing type to go with our spot illustration and then putting it all into a poster design. Design is about problem solving. So the problems we're solving are how to engage the viewer's eye, show them what we want to show them, keep them interested, keep them from leaving the poster too quickly, right? And seeing the words clearly, but not having the words distract from our image to have everything kind of work in unison and in support. We started with thumbnails of text blocking, figuring out how to space the type and fit it around our illustration, even how to place our illustration within the vertical format, the standard vertical format of a poster, and we're using the format of 16 by 20 inches by 350 pixels per inch. In different uh, approaches, you know, thumbnail approaches with typesetting and text blocking, th these are the initial problems you have to solve. Like, how do you get the type where you want it, where it's readable? I was thinking I could fit the, uh, the in word within the image. This was one text blocking experiment I did that I liked and kind of works in black and white, but in color was just too disruptive and that, that word got lost, you know, the work in progress. So there are a variety of ways you can text block and typeset on any given project. So instead, I decided to just put the in progress at the bottom and the work on top, and that seemed to, to work out. So what do you need to submit for this project? Your clean black type solution. It doesn't matter to me if it's spaced correctly or not. I kind of pushed them closer together here because I separated them out. You want your color type solution. And you can save these just as JPEGs on a white background. That's fine. They don't need to be PNGs. And then you want your full color poster solution. Okay, so in order to get these different file types, remember we, like our spot illustration assignment, assignment five, we have a lot of different component parts to this. You know, I have test files that then got vectorized, PNGs of just the type. But if you set it up in the way that I demonstrated, one nice attribute of that is that everything is within your master PSD file. And these master PSD files, because they're at full resolution, can get quite large. I know some of you in the class have files that are over, uh, over a gigabyte. Mine right now is 873 megabytes, right? And that's just because all of these different high resolution attributes and then all the different effects we put on them really can, can change it, really can make it bigger. All these copies. So one way to kind of lessen that is to turn off things and delete layers from your final poster you're not needing but these are the ones I would not delete. So do not delete the layers that make your background. You know, several layers are uh, layered up to make my background. And then in order to isolate just the type, even get rid of the border you want to turn those layers on and then save them right so you might have black type if you turn off all the effects And ultimately, it all builds your poster once everything is turned on. Understanding how all these components work is a big part of digital art. And you want it just to get stronger and stronger with each choice you make. So once you have your finished poster, you want to save that as a JPEG just to put into Canvas, like so. 
and it should have a white border around it. Okay, then we are also printing for our student show. So not only do you save it for yourself as a PSD, once you check the quality of it, and I always recommend viewing it before you make it print ready, bless you, you want to show it or view it at 100% scale, right? See the actual pixels, and then you want to check all of your corners. Because this can often happen, especially when we add borders, like there can be a little bit of stuff at the edge that you missed. And that's why I like to do this border mask at the top. <laughs> there it is. That crops everything and fills it with white. So that you don't get any surprises when you print it. So once you've checked your edges, I even have a slight kind of red edge around my border. You can see my CMYK color separation dots as an effect. That's something we'll talk more about as we review for the, the final exam. That's totally up to you. So I use my borders here to make my poster a little bit slimmer than 16 by 20. But my outside dimension is still 16 inches by 20 inches by 350 pixels per inch. Yes, not, not the inner image. If your inner image is 16 by 20, you can add a border simply by cropping everything, like using your crop tool. This can also help save memory. Make sure that you rasterize smart objects, at least smart object backgrounds when you do that. And then you would say image canvas size, and then you can grow it. I would grow it to like 17 by 22 or 21, like grow it an inch on each side. And then you can fill that background border with white. But you always want some sort of intentional border because you cannot print all the way to the edge of a piece of paper. Okay, so this is ready to make print ready. So what do I do? What, what I do is first I'm going to say, if I want to be really safe, because I accidentally flattened this once already, I'm going to say file, save as, and then, right under Save As, put PR in front of the name. And I'm going to actually save it to the desktop. PR stands for Print Ready. And then instead of a Photoshop format, we want a TIFF format, an archive format, T-I-F-F. -F, and then Save. The problem with that, I'm always going to use LZW. That makes it smaller. But it's going to ask me if I really want to use layers. Because TIFF formats are archive formats. They can support layers. But they're, they're made to be kind of for printing, for storage, not to take up a lot of memory. And those layers take up tons of memory. So it was 800 and something megabytes before. As a TIFF with LZW, it's not that much smaller because of all the layers. It's 722 megabytes. So it saved, you know, around 100 megabytes, which is not, not nothing. But... That's why we take our TIFF, so here it says PR TIFF, and now I flatten it. Flatten the image. This isn't my PSD, this is my TIFF. This is my print-ready TIFF. That moves everything into one layer. Everything should look exactly the same. We didn't change any of the resolution or any of the pixels. It just merges it all together. And then we save it. as that print ready TIFF. And so now if I check that memory, so it's a flattened TIFF file, it is only 100 megabytes. Went from 700 to 100. If I try to print something at 700 megabytes, even on really, really good machines, there's a good chance that it will buffer in the middle of printing. You know, that it won't, the print data won't be able to keep up with the machine, right? So it will start before it's ready to finish. And when that happens, the print heads stop in the middle and the ink dries at irregular rates. So then when the print heads start again, you can sometimes see a mark. So there's just lots of reasons we want clean printing. We want our archive print ready files to be flattened and not huge, right? Your PSD files can be as large as you want. They're your working format, but your TIFFs 
or your archive format. Once they're flattened, yes. Because once they're flattened, 16 by 20 by 350 should always be about the same. You know, if mine's 100 megabytes, yours should be about 100 megabytes. The, the only difference in that, because a pixel is a pixel, right, is that LZW compresses maybe in a way, in a pattern recognition way like a JPEG. So if your, your background is really basic, it will take up less memory than if you have lots of color variations, lots of different pixels. But it, will, it won't ever lose quality. Remember, TIFF with LZW is a lossless compression format. So once you've done that, you can quit it, and then you can go to the class Dropbox, and just like we printed for our midterm critique, you're going to go to the very first folder, and you're going to go to flatten TIFF files to print, and you're going to find your folder, find mine here, and then you're going to drag and drop your file in. And these are bigger than the, the 8 by 10 prints we were doing at the midterm. So it will take a little bit longer, about 20 seconds. But once it's in there, then it's on our, our networked uh, printing computers. And you are good to print. Here's the other reason you need to flatten. Because well, this is a shared account. It's got two terabytes of space. Oh, no, it doesn't have two terabytes. It has how much? It has like 20, I forget how much it has. Let's see. Made it harder. They used to tell me. We have a lot of space, but it gets used up, right? So you don't want to put anything that's too huge here. And if there's anything you don't need, and especially if there's any PSD file, then you want to get rid of them so that everyone has space for their stuff. All right, so I'm actually going to delete these two scans because I don't need those anymore. And now I'm going to go back to that printer and print. And it's the JPEGs that I put up to Canvas. Now, we are going to do a presentation critique on this. We're going to do that at 1030, so in about half an hour. And the question I want you to answer about your poster is, how do you want people to read your poster? So that's a design question. You're basically going to tell us, what do you want them to see first? What do you want them to notice second? You know, how do you want their eye to go through the poster? And we'll talk about def default eye movement and all these issues that are going to help you with your final project as well. Because we need the art to communicate your intentions for you. So I'll demonstrate with mine. I want people to look at this poster and immediately, because it's a central symmetrical design reinforced by the kind of grid in the background, I want people to immediately see this tiger, see that the tiger has an eye in the middle of its forehead, has this bright kind of complementary color, and then I want their eye to drift above it and see the words and then kind of put it all together, right? So it's like starting at the middle of the target and then working their way outward from the target, reading, and then hopefully not leaving too soon, maybe even if they want to give it a lot of attention, seeing that there are arrows at the sides and seeing that there is opening in the line work, and maybe understanding that this is a maze, that if they wanted to, they could visually find the route through. <laughs> it's been a while. And that's about as much like visual engagement you can expect to get from a poster, right? where they have a lot to look at, a lot to notice. And then the only other thing they might do is really, really get close to it. You'll see people do this in galleries and things. And notice the difference in textures, you know, between the dots of the background and the smoother 
diffu diffused diffusion, sand pattern diffusion 